10 lightning, three quakes, and 25 giants as Klaus begins with his first attack. Today we kick off the Coco Invitational. It is two versus two. And each player will get two attacks there, and then the extra account of the war there will not play. But this is a show match, and that means that these guys are going to be trying to be as creative as possible, and we're seeing it right out of the gate. It is Gaku starting us off here with 100 minions to pair with the Queen Charge. That is 200 camp space of just minions here as we start off this Coco Invitational. Now, the teams today are going to be Gaku, and his teammate is going to be Yo-Yo23. On the other side, as you can see on defense right now, is Klaus, and he's going to be paired with the player who was on Rapata Gaming when they came in second place at the World Championship, and a star player on that squad, it will be Temper as his teammate. So let's see what Gaku can do here as he just set up the Flame Flinger with the Recall Queen Charge. Now the Queen Charge is redirected to go to the Town Hall now. And not deployed any other healers or heroes here yet. But the heroes have to do a lot of the heavy lifting here. It is all single and four, so that'll definitely assist with going in with the minions. However, it is a double poison tower, so he actually has to deal with both of the poison towers because if either of them hit that big pack of minions, it's going to wipe out every single one of them. So he's got to be very, very mindful of that. But the flame figures would go all the way in. It's to get the wizard tower down. It'll probably honestly get that poison tower out of the way there as well, potentially. I guess we'll see. But the scatter shot going down here, and if you guys did notice, I'm not in my normal recorded space here. We're still out in Poland, so this will be one of the last uh, videos that we will have recorded out in Poland, although some of them may release after this. But watch the queen, watch the queen. Queen goes to abilities to see what Inferno locks on, and there we go. Minions swarming in at the bottom of the base there. Tons of them. Holy cow. Grab a screenshot of that. That might be a thumbnail. But then again, there's so many opportunities for thumbnails in this video. So I don't know what to expect there. But there's one ability as he ends up swarming to the core of the base. There. The other poison tower is dealt with. He's got the scatter shot at the top of the base there under control as well. He's got to save his queen though. Queen gets the freeze. Also freezing the scatter shot. Protected the world champion. Minions are swarming. Oh my god. They've wiped out the core of the base there. RC still moving though. Freeze the last wizard tower. Air defense trying to do what it can here, but it's not much. There's not much that it can do. There's too much in the swarm. Super minions out of the flame flicker, joining with the pack, and one more freeze to try to lock out some of the faster fire and defenses. But the RC moving through, and can you believe it? Gaku brings the minion swarm, and he takes down Klaus. That's how you start off a show match, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you get it done. That was 200 camp space of just minions. And then on top of that, he had more minions, or I guess super minions, inside of his siege machine, just as icing on the cake there. So that's how you make it happen. Gaku, I guess he technically had uh, 101 minions when you count the one that was inside of his flame flinger. Timper will now strike back. It looks like he's breaking out the barge. Now it's a hundred troop space of barbarians and archers here, but he's also paired with it a couple of sneaky goblins. He's got a electro dragon, valkyries, golems, hogs, lots and lots of lightning. So I guess we'll see what he can do with this. He's also brought in six super wall breakers. So obviously diving in with a big hero charge here, but let's move in. Timper will now start off with his barge using his eight lightning and two quakes to go ahead and take out the defensive roar champion. And uh, that would have been nice if he would have got that expo down. What's he gonna do about that expo? If he wants to put his flame through that area, he needs to get that expo under control. And I wonder if he intended for it to go down right there. Looks like it should have fit in. He did a lot of damage to it, so maybe. Hmm. Okay, there's the earthquake. Okay, but the flame figure is getting targeted there. He used the last lightning on it. Okay, yep. I, I don't know if he had a different plan there for that lightning, but he definitely made a mistake on that one. E-Drag gets shot down, and I, I don't know how I feel about this because now he's going to get past two mortars, and he still needs to get the town hall down, but he took a lot of damage to his flame figure from that expo. There's a bunch of red air bombs as he drops in the balloon, stops the wizard tower takedown, and... I mean, Gaku's base is giving a little bit of trouble here. I like the, I like the attempt at creativity, but I'm not sure how this is going to go right now. Over to the right side, we do have Sneaky Goblin set up a funnel to go into the monolith over there. So, potentially going to get ready for a hero dive into that area. But the king 
down south here. I guess he's gonna not be able to lock out of the Flame Flinger, but there is fire damage going to the Town Hall, like, right now, and it does find the Glock on. Maybe it will get it down. Maybe he's fine. He does get the shot there. One more shot, and I know he's fine. Okay, he's got rocket bullets. Okay, he's gonna get it. He's gonna get it. I'm not worried about the tunnel anymore. He'll also get the defensive king out of the way there down there as well. And here we go with the heroes. Dive into the right side of the base there. For hero equipment, we see the level 17 giant gauntlet. High level equipment for the queen. Rage gem onto the warden. And I also need to go back and look at that uh, minion deck. I just realized I never actually looked to see what hero equipment that uh, Gaku was running for that. I think he also was running the rage gem try to boost the damage of the minions. Not really worth trying to get them more HP because that's not going to do anything. So that would be the most likely equipment that I could see him running there. But this queen stepping all the way through and with the diggy able to get through the scatter shot right there. It's like queen is running the diggy there with the world champion running the spear fox. But he's honestly doing pretty good here crossing the base here. RC just needs to get past his defensive Queen here, but the single Inferno locks on. He's out of freezes now, but he does get the defensive Queen engaged there. Warden assisting, and one more shot there. Warden takes it, and he's got to deal with the scatter shot. Warden's working on it. Diggy gets a stun. Diggy working on it. Okay, scatter shot stays standing, and he almost made it, guys. He actually made it pretty far through that base there, considering that it did stall up at the beginning there. But honestly, this top area wouldn't have been affected. Like, he did recover the initial problems there fairly well. But the top area of the base here is going to stand one way or another. So a solid attempt here. But we'll pass it back over to Gaku and Yo-Yo. And we'll see what they can do response here as they have the lead to start off the show match. I have to assume that he messed up the lightning and he was supposed to take that expo down. And then he probably had the extra lightning to pair with the E-Drag chains to take out the scatter shot Because that seemed to be what he's looking for there. But let's see what Gaku's hero equipment was. He had a level 23 giant gauntlet. And he was running a maxed out Rage Gem on his Warden. But it looks like we're live the next attack here. So let's dive on over into Yo-Yo 23. And he's going to make a barge attempt of his own. However, this one has five Ice Gloves and 55 Wall Breakers. All right, no Super Wall Breakers needed for Yo-Yo 23. And I guess we'll see how many walls he can get open here. Because that's just like Field of Troops. They're obviously, they got some utility, but... After a certain extent, like, as soon as you got the walls open, what do you do with the rest? Maybe use them for distraction on the back side of the base there? I have no idea. However, he did use some lightning to set up the heroes here. And the flame flicker makes his way in the right side of the base there. What do you get with the lightning? Looks like he got the... He got everything next to the entry compartment there in the middle. I didn't, I didn't see what it was. We'll watch that lightning again there. I was too busy looking at that other attack, but... Let's uh, see what he can do here as he makes his way forward with the king. Step it out in front of the queen and the warden. For hair equipment, level 21 giant gauntlet. Maxed out on that rage vial, by the way. And a uh, level 18 invisibility vial. Running the rage gem here, but only level 14. Max RC equipment as well. And now he needs to cross all the way over to the town hall here. He's got a long way to go with his heroes. And the flame flicker, on the other hand, is, is doing some really, really good work on the right side of the base here. But there's a lot of heavy, heavy defenses. This line of expos, and then combine that with single infernos in the core of the base there. And then combine that with still taking eagle artillery strikes there and incoming town hall damage. And he's definitely got a ton of damage cut him, coming at him right now. But the king will make his way to the town hall there. Ice Golem starting to freeze up the area a little bit there. RC trying to do what she can in the core of the base there, using skeleton spells to disable the single infernos in the core of the base. And we are seeing... A lot of people starting to veer towards single Infernos in the meta right now to try to stop the Root Rider spam because single Infernos do a decent job of just taking a bunch of them down there. So we are seeing Klaus actually running multiple single Infernos on these bases. And we're seeing that all across like Legend League and stuff lately. So very, very interesting, but it doesn't slow down Yo-Yo as the barge with mass super wall breakers easily sweeps across the base. So here's that lighting that we missed. Just use it to take out the Inferno and the Monolith and then the Bomb Tower to set up the funnel. Then the Warden and Queen Walk quickly joined in. And he kind of took a risk right there with the Queen potentially going over towards the Flame Flinger. But he did map it out right and he is rewarded with the triple. Klaus. Oh boy. Oh boy. Here, here's the troop that doesn't get used very often. It is 25 Giants. I mean... If these guys can triple with the armies that they have, I have no doubt that Klaus could potentially pull this off here. But look at this. 
10 lightning, 3 quakes, and 25 giants as Klaus begins with his first attack. Remember, each of the players are going to get two attacks here. So we'll see how that ends up playing out, but looks like he's just going to go ahead and use the Flame Flinger to go in after the Town Hall. And that means he needs to get the Town Hall activated, and it will activate there naturally when he attacks the Inferno. So that works out perfect. He can get a lot of value right there. Kind of a weird base, but he will march in that area there without any problem. And the King could have potentially caused some problems right there, but he was able to disable the King and then take him down with the Headhunters and get him out of the way. And now with Town Hall activated, he'll get the Inferno, he'll get the Town Hall takedown. And that's a nice setup here. Now he will dive his heroes in for the right side of the base here. And I'm surprised, I'm very, very surprised that he is not using his Giants yet. He had the opportunity to put Giants out in front of the King and the Queen here. And he will start to now. The King is going to just clear his own Kabar. We got the Queen out of the way there. Lightning clears the core of the base. And he had a lot of it. He had a lot of Quakes as well. Almost every single one of the spells here is used for the... Lightning, and that leaves him with one freeze total. But the king was able to clear his compartment there. He goes to Phoenix, and he's fighting off the defensive clan castle right now. But he doesn't get any of it down. All right, that's not, that's not a problem, though. He got his value before he ran into the problems there. And the Giants will now take the lead here in front of the queen and the warden. He's got healers there as well. And he also has more Giants that he can sprinkle in front of the Royal Champion. Trying to provide tanking for as she moves through. But he drops in more Giants now. Pops the Warden ability. For Warden ability, we got a Rage Gem and Eternal Tome. Queen with base equipment. King had that level 21 Giant Gauntlet as we saw. And then some base equipment on the Royal Champion with no extra levels. But he needs to get through this wall here. He had Super Wall Breakers, but he used them over for the King. Not really using them for the Giants. Just let him beat through the wall. It's a little bit slower, but it does eventually get the job done. Now we got Valkyries going out of the flame flinger on the side of the base there, but they immediately get met by a poison tower that is going to do a lot of damage to them, but they are at least... I guess I was going to say they are at least tanking the Monarch there, but honestly, I don't know what he wants the Monarch to do. Or which, what's the best target for it to go after? The Valkyries are going back to the core of the base, though, and the Giants are getting there as well. Where a champion goes to the very top of the base there. Giants deployed with her as well. Provide the tanking in the area. The... The Grand Warden jumped the wall and moved forward. The Giants reached the Monolith, and they're working on it. He's got Wizards right there, right behind him. He's got the Force to take it down, I think. Maybe, maybe, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Okay, okay, okay. This is going to get dicey here, but the Queen says, sir. Queen breaks the wall. Queen takes the final shot of the Monolith, and RC with ability will continue sweeping through. He's just got to beat the clock now. He's got cleaned up up the top of the base there. He's got a couple storage. He's got to power through. And he's sort of going to go down slow. RC goes to the right. He needs somebody to go to the... He needs somebody to go to the right. There we go. That perfect split. Perfect split. Oh, no. Klaus. 99. 0.99%. .99%. <laughs> oh, man. So close. Look, look. The shot is about to be thrown. Or the Spirit Fox could have taken a hit as well. But it is going to be a miss for Klaus, and that means that Gaku and Yo-Yo are up by two stars. But it's just a show match, so the score doesn't really matter. It's just about seeing the crazy attacks that these guys can do. If 100 minions wasn't good enough for ya, for this one, Gaku's breaking out 100 barbarians and 100 archers. This is a true barch. Starting with the heroes at the very top of the base there, and he's got a tiny amount of support outside of the healers here. Just a couple of wall breakers, a couple of coco loons, and that's about it. A light funnel there with some goblins. And the queen and warden will begin their path to the base there. We're seeing base equipment on the queen, level 15 gear. And then max equipment on the warden there with the rage gem, boosting the damage of the queen and boosting the damage of the queen's healers as well. But we'll lose the healer to a black air bomb. Gets a coco loon down. We'll wrap around that eagle artillery compartment. Not even diving into it. Just going all the way around here. Gonna make his way to the right-hand compartment. That's an interesting path. Like, you wouldn't be expecting if the queen was gonna start at the top of the base, that she would continue across the top of the base, but he will go ahead and pop the ward ability. And we'll keep the queen protected there. Try to get those uh, clan castle troops that were hiding behind the walls there, but the warden snipes them off. And the queen will keep on powering forward here. To go ahead and uh, freeze as he goes to out of the ward ability. Keep that log launcher protected. The log launcher needs the walls open. Looks like that throw right there gets all the walls open, but he would have, like, one more throw there to get the walls open into the Town Hall compartment. But he's got other paths that he can use to get there. 
And it looks like was it Ice Golems popping out of his clan castle. Yet that'll freeze everything up there. But he's got defensive Ice Golems countering that. And now here we go. King up at the top of the base there. Roar Champion goes to the core. He's got a skeleton spell there. Going to go ahead and lock down the single Inferno. He probably would have loved one for the Monolith as well. But he doesn't have that luxury right now. Queen goes ahead and rages up again. Goes invisible. And now the march through the Monolith is going to be the difficult part here. Because he's not going that direction right now. He's going to lose the Warden. Queen's on her own now. There goes her extra rage as well. He has to freeze and the queen goes ability. Oh, he's kind of risking a one star right now if he doesn't get this under control. It's the only, the queen is the only thing on the base right now that can secure the tower takedown. She does step into it. She does take it down. Now watch the road champion. Road champion making a close approach here to the monolith. Pops her ability, go invisible. Now, nope, she can't go invisible. The spirit fox died. She's on her own up there. She has to take it. If she takes it, I think he can make it. But if he doesn't get it, he's in trouble and he doesn't get it. Okay, barbarians and archers are swarming. Look at this Phoenix. Look at the Phoenix taking out the scatter shot. That's huge right there. Queen stayed alive. Barely, barely alive here. Hold the attention to the expo, but that only lasts for a moment. He's got the barbarians and archers swarming. All the splash damage is gone, but spring traps have claimed a lot. Archers into the right side. Gotta get these big defense under control here, but that expo is mowing them down. Giant Bomb claims the rest, and he's not getting anything else out of it. It is a miss. 95% and the Barch can't get it done. Timper now in with goblins and sneaky goblins. Got a bunch of other troops here. There's a, there's a lot of random troops here. Looks like the only concentration of anything in this army is the goblins and sneaky goblins. But unfortunately, he ran into a big Tesla farm there and he's got a lot of bat spells though. He's got a ton of bat spells here, but the Tesla's gonna potentially cause some problems with that as he tries to use the bat. Okay, okay, yeah, this is interesting. Look at this. The bat wave is going to move off to the right after clearing out the Teslas, and it's going to try to take out the Inferno and the Expos, but the Teslas are giving us some trouble here. I want to get this Expo down, though. That'd be his primary target. Come on. Come on go bats. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay, he's good. He's good. Throws down a balloon. Trying to get the rest of the Teslas dealt with here. I don't know if he's got that area under control, but I see that the Flame Flinger has begun at the top of the base there, using a Yeti to control the mortars up there and just keep them tanked. Looks like the Flame Flinger's locked on now to the Giant over the right there. Going to go tank more shots of the mortar there as the Yeti wasn't able to stay in the taking position for long enough to prevent all the strikes there, but the mortar does get a lock onto the Flame Flinger and he does take one hit, but I think he's got enough left there in the tank that he should be able to get through the Eagle Artillery, especially once the fire onto the inferno starts to deal damage over there but at the same time he's doing a warden walk over the right side of the base there warden running the rage gem level 14 and we're seeing level 17 giant gauntlet right here for the king king's gonna collapse in and meet up with everybody else and looks like he's able to get the teslas out of the way here but just sprinkling in some goblins there's the wall breaker down south gonna go and get the town hall opened up here now we can dive in the sneaky goblins with the invisibility to go secure the tower take down. It's got this, he's got to get this invisibility tower pre-triggered. Otherwise, it's going to be doing a lot of... It's going to, it's going to save the town hall there. So we got, to, we got to make sure we got that dealt with here. But the Flame Flinger was able to get the Eagle Artillery down. He has that fire off of him. But he needs to hurry up and get the town hall down. Otherwise, he's going to take a lot of damage when the, the Queen and the Warden get a little bit closer. But the Warden was leading the charge there a little bit there. The King surged out in front. And he stayed protected all the way through the base there. He clears the entire channel. So he was able to achieve his functions. The Sneaky Goblins got their job done as well, and the Queen can finally continue on. But he lost all the healers. Bats are moving through now. He's got the World Champion locking out the Multi-Archer Tower. He's got some tanky troops over to the other Multi-Archer Tower. He's got a Golem. Is that a Golem? Yeah, a Golem taking the scatter shot here. Ice Golem's in the far back side of the base. Their Queen pops her ability. Bats is swarming through. That's how you get it done. How many Bat spells was that? I mean, two different bat waves in the same attack that is how you make it happen guys and let's see it was 12 bat spells total literally only one freeze and one invisibility for the goblins and the rest of the spell lineup was all bats now as we begin the final exchange the score has evened out a little bit there with timper giving them a chance here so if klaus and timper win this exchange then they will win this show match but Yo-Yo 23 making his way in with baby dragons and super giants. We got a bunch of super wall breakers to bear with it. And he's got the healers that are taking up the bulk of his army right there. But 
Kind of a random mashup of troops once again. Love to see it. That's what we're looking for. That's why we like these creative format tournaments, and that's why we love a show match, especially when we have players of this skill here to show off their skills. Their, their skills that they're showing off, yeah. But uh, Yo-Yo is going to make his way into the town hall with the Flame Flinger. I'm noticing they're running a lot of single Infernos. Are you seeing that too? Why are we seeing so many single Infernos? Did they specifically set the single Inferno so that they could do more creative attacks there? And make the uh, show match a little bit more fun? Or is this the basis that they have been running and they're just using single Infernos to try to shut down Root Rider spam on the basis that they are using? You know? Are these real bases? <laughs> That's the question. I don't, I don't even know. But, I mean, there is a lot more you can do when you're going to get single Infernos than when you're going to get multis. Although, you can do a lot of heavier troops and multis and run healers and power through it. But, looks like he's doing pretty good here. Giants. Where are the super giants? There, I see him down at the very bottom corner there. But, I'm seeing a level 21 giant gauntlet. High level equipment on the queen. Level 14... Rage Gem and that Rage Gem boost and everybody to make his way through the core of the base here. But the World Champion using those Super Giants along the outside of the base. The heroes just marching through with the healers. The he heroes with healers just clearing out the entire interior of the base there and just sprinkling in Super Giants to try to keep the damage off of the World Champion. Make sure none of the perimeter defenses are able to lock onto her. But the Town Hall is finally engaged there by the Flame Flinger. Hopefully has enough to actually take it down. The Queen is going to pop her ability. Get the defensive Queen out of the way there. Clear out the defense in the area. And then go invisible to keep that Expo off of her. There's the Super Giant at the very top corner of the base. There are Baby Dragons swarming the outside of the base. Their Queen steps through. will assist with the Tunnel Takedown. And it looks like the Giants have taken her healers down here. But that's fine. It looks like he's got out of control here. Yo-Yo 23 will get the win here for Gaku and, and himself. And himself. Gaku and Yo-Yo will have 11 stars and they will put it out of reach here. And man, oh man, to get three triples after all those crazy attacks are insane. But we have one more attack here. So let's see what Klaus has in store for us for this final attack of the show match. 50 Barbarians, 50 Archers, 50 Goblins, and then 11 Sneaky Goblins is enough to potentially go secure a town I'll take down. He's got a mix of Wall Breakers and Super Wall Breakers. One Coco Loon total, and the Queen Charge will begin into the base here. But unlike those other bases with the single Furnos, Yo-Yo 23 has three multis. And imagine trying to send a Barch into three multi-Infernos. Definitely has his work cut out for him, but he does go to ability very, very quickly with his Queen. Flame Figure doing a good job with the side of the base there. We'll go ahead and clear out a bunch in that area there. At least get the multi-Arch Tower. If he can take the turn up there and get the multi-Inferno out of the way, that would be amazing. Well, here comes the defensive CC while breaking the goblins into the town hall compartment, making sure to go in off to the side. Don't go directly to the center because if you go off to the side, then we have to we only have to go through one storage to be able to actually get the sneak goblins onto the town hall. But he gets the invisibility power triggered with the first wave of goblins. He's got six more on standby. He's got an invisibility that he can use there to protect the rest of them. And there they go. Queen taking eagle artillery strikes there. But the queen did she just go down? Uh oh, that's not good. That's not good. All right, well Klaus is in trouble. Klaus is in a lot of trouble there because you're really banking on the Queen getting a lot of value here. And if she goes down, then that's... Oh, just kidding! Just kidding! The Queen didn't go down! He just recalled her! I missed it! All right! <laughs> Disregard! He's still... He's still cooking here! Let him cook! There's the Warden! Read up point there with the Queen! And the Flame Flinger is still moving on the side of the base there! Did he get the defensive hero out of the way over there? Looks like he did. Looks like he got the defensive road champion with the Flame Flinger or whatever was deployed in that area. Maybe some barge went in there? I don't even know. But now the Clan Castle troops are deployed on the side of the base there. And it is Root Riders popping out. Queen Charge continues. Warden working with the Queen. I can't believe I thought the Queen died there. I completely missed the recall there. And he will have the Root Riders join with the Royal Champion up across the top of the base there. And they can work their way together in the base there. Just get a bunch of extra tanking out of them. But they do quickly go down. It's a Scattershot and Expo. Just kind of lay into them. But... We got a bunch of barbarians and archers working across the top of the base there. Queen and the warden did ultimately go down, so the king is trying to pick up the slack there. RC is going to be hit by the monolith. Monolith is protected by the in or by the invisibility tower, but the world champion goes down. And when the world champion goes down, this one is stuck. He's not going to make it any further here. I mean, I mean, I guess the queen did eventually go down. Unfortunate for Klaus not able to make this happen. But I guess the star of the show today was definitely Gaku. 
with his 100 minion attack there. And I think that one's going to be the thumbnail. I think that stands. But there were some crazy attacks all the way through the war here, guys. But this is just the beginning of the Coco Invitational. So we'll be giving coverage of this 2 versus 2 tournament all the way through. And we'll have more and more creative matches just like this coming up here. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. And, of course, we'll see you in the next one.